Words appear. The following program is available in high definition TV. Welcome to the future. PBS Digital. Now a 1983 Lancet article. The claims were stunning. A study by a maverick ophthalmologist seemed to indicate that a two cent nutritional supplement might save the lives of millions of poor children around the world. But health experts were skeptical, to say the least. It was just too good to be true. Here's this ophthalmologist. He knows about eyes, but what's he know about children and their lives? Alfred Somer is indeed an eye doctor who has spent much of his career helping people survive the worst conditions of the developing world. I knew I always wanted to be a doctor, although I wasn't interested in practicing uh, traditional medicine. What he was interested in was saving vision especially for the thousands of children he encountered with a condition known as night blindness. A child who's night blind uh, literally can't fend for him or herself. They are sort of enclosed by this. If the deficiency is not treated, then the eye is uh, permanently lost. There's nothing you can do about it. As he explored ways to cure this terrible affliction, Alfred Somer began to notice something remarkable in his data. Something that, if he was right, might save far more than the sight of millions of children across the globe. A man squints as he walks through a sunny village. This man also discovered something that affects the lives of the world's poor and needy. But it was neither extraordinary nor a mystery. This Ugandan pond is full of disease organisms. When those ladies came to collect this water, I felt sick. A glass of murky water. Some of the worst infectious agents on earth can be found in this single putrid glass. And this is what people drink? This is what we use. Millions of people suffer every day from unclean drinking water. And what is needed is simple and basic. And every day, people like Kiwe Sabunya are transforming lives and even whole nations with the gift of clean water. Boys watch water flow from a faucet. You can't have a totally healthy society unless you've got good nutrition and clean water. One doctor, one engineer, one vision. Back to the basics, coming next on Rx for Survival. Images appear over a rotating earth. A doctor presses a toddler's abdomen and an ophthalmologist gives a child an eye exam. More children walk hand in hand. A researcher looks up from his microscope. A needle stirs a vial of medicine, and a United Nations SUV drives in a city. Two girls smile joyfully, and a man leans on a walking stick. A title appears, Rx for Survival, a global health challenge. Major funding for Rx for Survival was provided by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation working to ensure that life-saving advances in health reach those who need them most. And by... If you ran a drug company, what would you change? I would try to prevent disease, not just treat it. I would go after the really tough diseases. I'd make it so folks wouldn't have to choose between their groceries and their medicine. At Merck, we believe in the same things you do. Because 50 years ago, George Merck told us to put patients first by creating novel medicines and vaccines and getting them to the people who need them. I would try to see everything through the eyes of a patient. Merck, where patients come first. A title, Back to the Basics, narrated by Brad Pitt. Children play with water buffalo in southern Asia. Some children ride on the backs of the wading beasts. Two children smile at the camera as others splash. Eight-year-old Saraswati and her friend Perinder are just like the other children splashing around. But at dusk, something strange happens to their vision. They become night blind. Produced by Tabitha Jackson and Mike Beckham. As the world dims about them, they feel more and more isolated from their friends, unable to join in. Devi Anaria Pazman, Saraswati's mother. What can we do? We're poor people. I have to feed her. I have to take her everywhere. I just don't know how she's going to get along in life. An older child leads them away from the lake. By the time the sun sets, they are enclosed in their own darkness. The sun sinks below the horizon. Now an oil lamp burns. Scientists have known for decades that night blindness like Saraswati's 
is caused by a lack of vitamin A in the food she eats. Her meager diet, like most children in Asia, consists almost entirely of white rice, which has no vitamin A. And without it, she is in danger of going completely blind. She stares at the lamp's flame. Millions of the world's poor and malnourished children become night blind. And this seemed to be yet another unstoppable tragedy of the developing world. A gaunt mother holds her child. Until it caught the attention of an eye specialist in Baltimore. He examines a child. All right, David, why don't you put your chin right here on the chin rest. Alfred Sommer so is no ordinary eye doctor. For over a decade, he was a public health physician stationed in poor countries where he was naturally drawn to the plight of night blind children. A child who's night blind. Dr. Alfred Sommer, Johns Hopkins University. Paul uh, literally can't fend for him or herself. When the other children are walking around the village or playing with toys, these children will huddle in a corner. Saraswati crouches alone in the lamplight. The reason they can't see has to do with the rod cells in their eyes. Without vitamin A, these cells can't produce a light-sensitive chemical called rhodopsin that helps us see in low light. If the condition goes untreated, the outlook worsens. Then the children will go truly blind because what happens is the cornea, that clear front of the eye, just melts away. And it can melt away in the course of one day. Photos document cloudy growths on eyes. Somer flips through a book in his office. In 1976, Somer mounted an exploratory mission to see if he could find a practical way to prevent night blindness in children. Photos show thin children with clouded eyes. He began his mission in Indonesia, and for good reason. And it's a place where, because of the nutritional choices and because of extreme poverty, night blindness had been extremely common. In a recreation, Somer fills a syringe. Although Somer knew that night blind children could be treated with injections of vitamin A, this was an impractical solution in the developing world. In Indonesia and every other developing part of the world, where are you going to find a needle and syringe that's sterile? So clearly we need something far more practical, but it had to be at least as rapidly effective as the injection was. Working by lamplight, Somer treats children in a clinic. As he looked for a solution, Somer began to wonder if just a few drops of vitamin A given orally would produce the same results. Somer snips open a capsule. He lets a few drops flow into a child's mouth. He tried the drops on a small group of children. An assistant holds a flashlight as Somer doses more children. Later, a child arrives at the clinic. <laughs> the results were beyond Somer's wildest dreams. Most children could see perfectly the very next day. Somer examines the children's eyes. <laughs> Even more dramatically, those who came in on the tip of going blind with corneal ulcers suddenly heal where they would never have healed before. And these children would have gone blind within the week. Boys laugh and wrestle. You carry those mental images of these little children that you directly treated. You know, that's where you get your great thrills as a clinician, you treating somebody and they get better. Now anyone could treat night blind children without injections or trained medical staff. Somer treats a child, then jots notes. But Somer still needed to know how many children were at risk and how night blindness progressed over time. He measures and weighs children. So he began a long-term study. Somer notes the circumference of a boy's arm, now in his office. Many months later, back in Baltimore, Somer is poring over mountains of survey data when he notices something he never thought possible. Suddenly, it looked like something very funny was happening to the numbers. As he looked at the progress of the night blind children, he saw that they were dying at an alarming rate, not from eye problems, but from typical childhood illnesses like measles and diarrhea. And no matter how you sliced it, the children who had night blindness had a much greater risk of dying before the next examination. This raised a remarkable possibility. Was the vitamin A deficiency that caused night blindness also making children weak and vulnerable to other diseases? Keith West.